this is what's going to happen with home prices for the rest of the year. It's a fact. Just kidding. It's not a fact. It's just another prediction, but we're going to talk through all these predictions. We're going to look at what some of these companies had predicted was going to happen for this year and what they're now predicting the rest of the year is going to be like and what we need to do in Phoenix in order to stay aligned with what they're expecting. So let's get into it, you guys. Welcome back. I'm Caitlin McKegg. I'm a real estate broker here in Phoenix. Uh, and here are all the forecasts, 2023 year end home price forecasts. So so uh, Mortgage Bankers Association originally said home prices were going to go down by 0.6%. And now their current forecast is that uh, we're not going to see much change by the end of the year. Fannie Mae down 1.5%. Their current forecast is that we will actually increase by 3.9%. Morgan Stanley says we'll be down by 4%. Um, and now they're saying for the end of the year, we won't have any change. American Enterprise Institute was quite aggressive with their forecast originally, down 15 to 20%, and now they'll, they're saying we'll be up 6%. No big deal. <laughs> Zillow, negative 0.7%, um, and now they're saying up 5.5%. Uh, I've looked at those numbers for Zillow, and I think I did a video based on their prediction and uh, and five and a half percent might be realistic for Phoenix. We'll see. Um, we're going to look at that in a second. Wells Fargo down five and a half percent originally. Now they're saying up 2.2 percent. Goldman Sachs, I've already said my piece on them, down five to 10 percent. Now they're saying up 1.8 percent. And then home price expectation survey down 2.04 percent. And now they're saying 3.32%. But really the, the biggest thing to look at here is everyone predicted that home prices would go down this year by any percentage, whether it was tiny at 0.6% or large 15 to 20%. And now every single uh, company is now forecasting either no change or an increase in home prices. Uh, so I think it's safe to say this year gave us different outcomes than what most people expected. Um, not just these forecasting companies, but just, uh, you know, the public in general, many real estate agents, um, you know, I think a lot of people just expected it to be a tougher year than it has been. Uh, now we still have a few months left in the year. We saw a lot of appreciation and home price growth at the beginning of the year, and all of that started to soften. So, uh, you know, a lot could change between now and December. And uh, you know me, I'm not making any predictions, any forecasts, um, because no one's ever right. Let's be honest. And if you are right, it's luck. It's very, very, very hard to actually forecast what's going to happen because there are so many factors. So let's look at where our prices are at in Phoenix right now. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see. Um, and I'll take 2022 off there because we're just looking at 2023. Um, so started the year at 410. Today we're sitting at 435. And uh, we peaked at 445. Uh, four-ish, uh, and that was in June. So like I said, things have softened a little bit. Overall, we're roughly seeing about a 6% increase from the beginning of the year to where we're at today. So going back to these uh, forecasts, um, American Enterprise Institute would be right on the money um, for Phoenix if we just continue where we're at for the rest of the year. Uh, Zillow's also not that far off. Um, those are the closest predictions. Now, again, this is for the nation. This is not for Phoenix specifically, but just like to see where we're at. So, you know, if we stay stable here at around 435 is that median sales price, uh, we will be at uh, a 6% increase for the year. If we go down, uh, we may end, you know, with really no increase at the end of the year, or there's a chance we could go up. So what factors would change the median sales price in Phoenix? A couple things. So we want to look at supply and we want to look at demand. And one of the reasons why our home prices haven't fallen is because our supply is pretty low. Uh, demand is also low, don't get me wrong, but it is not lower than supply right now. So that's kept things moving along. When we look at our supply, this is months of supply. So in other words, if no new homes came on the market, all of these homes uh, would be sold within 
2.4 months. That's how you read the months of supply. So that's a pretty short period of time uh, for us to have demand eat up all of the supply that we currently have. Usually the rule is that about six months of inventory is a balanced market. The Cromford report says that that's uh, it's it's typically like that four to six range, not necessarily right at six. Uh, either way, we are very well below six months of inventory, even below four months of inventory. Now you'll see it starting to go up the last few months. So it's something to keep our eye on because if this does increase quite significantly, especially overnight, not sure that that would happen, but especially if it happened relatively quickly, uh, you would certainly start to see prices go down uh, and buyers would have more choices. Therefore, prices would start to go down. So months of supply is something we want to keep our eye on because inventory is one of the main factors keeping our prices where they're at today. But the other side of the equation is demand. And that's really hard to measure. And the, one of the best ways to measure it from what we're able to see is, uh, is the, the listings under contract. So how quickly homes are being bought up or, or going under contract. And you'll see here the overall trend is this has started to go down. Now, we tend to see the most activity in the spring. That's not abnormal. I don't know how this is going to continue if we're just going to hang out the rest of the year, if we're going to start trending downward. A lot of this is going to depend on mortgage rates, right? So mortgage rates are really determining our demand or at least a big chunk of it at this point because that's what is uh, taking away a lot of the affordability for people. Although home prices are higher than they've ever been in some instances, the the price that you have to pay on a mortgage makes that home payment really, that mortgage payment really high for a lot of people. So listings under contract, best way to really look at our demand as far as we can tell. There's other things to look at too, as far as mortgage applications and that kind of thing, but just for today's purposes and keeping it kind of simple, we're seeing listings under contract go down slightly. We'll see if this trend continues. So if we've got supply that starts to go up and we've got demand that starts to go down, we could certainly find ourselves in a place where the sales price is going to start to trickle off here. We could also see it stay flat. That's another possibility, really depending on where we fall with the supply and demand. But overall, this is what the end of the year is going to look like for these uh, companies forecasting. And we will see who's right at the end of the year. I'll revisit this and um, let's find out who is the closest for Phoenix. Again, this is all national, but you know it's good to see where Phoenix uh, lands in comparison to these national forecasts. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Let me know what you think. Who is right on these forecasts? Are we going to see home prices increase? Are we going to see them go down? I want to hear from you. So thanks for joining me. If you're curious about the home price in your area, check the description below. I've got a link where you can request that information. I will see you guys back on Tuesday for a market update. I'm Caitlin McKegg with the Desert Dreamers team.